Welcome to Stories Found. Each week we feature funny, weird, and mostly true stories from writers, artists, and storytellers around the world. I'm your host, Ava Love Hanna, a writer and humorist from Austin, Texas. Joining me is my writing partner, audio engineer, and all-around cool guy, Paul Hanna. You're listening to Stories Found. Our featured organization this week is the Kentucky Playwrights Workshop. They're dedicated to promoting and encouraging the development of new works for the stage and providing support of playwrights who live in the state of Kentucky. We invite you to visit them at kyplays.org to learn more about their programming and how you can get involved. Thanks for joining us for a very special Halloween edition of Stories Found. This week we're talking to the talented playwright Fred Tacon, and then listening to his hilarious and spooky 10-minute play, Rent a Stiff. Fred is a playwright, composer, director, and performer from Kentucky. He's written several short plays, musicals, and monologues that have been seen and streamed in a variety of places. Fred also serves as vice president of the Kentucky Playwrights Workshop, an organization dedicated to promoting and encouraging the development of new works for the stage by Kentucky playwrights. Fred is multi-talented and super fun to chat with, and I'm excited to introduce you to him today. Hi, Fred. Welcome to Stories Found. We are really excited to have you here today talking to us about your hilarious play, Rent a Stiff. Hi, Ava. Thank you very much for having me. So we selected your show as one of our Halloween episodes, and it was from a special holiday call for submissions. But I'm going to be honest with you. I think I would want to produce this even if it wasn't just for Halloween. It is super funny. So thanks for sending it over to us. Thank you. I I really appreciate you all wanting to include my play in your podcast, and I am excited to hear it. Oh, it's we are we are so excited. The actors are looking forward to it. It's it's just going to be a blast. So, without giving too much away, tell everyone a little bit about the play and what we're going to hear today. Sure. So, the, the history of this play actually goes back almost 25 years. Wow. My wife was in a production of Arsenic and Old Lace, and if mm-hmm. you're familiar with that show, there is a a dead body in the house, uh, and my brother-in-law, her brother, played the corpse. Mm-hmm. And so we were joking, wouldn't it be fun to actually create a company that rented out corpses <laughs> for whatever, for theatrical productions or or whatever someone might need a corpse for? Um, and so from that, we, we kind of came up with a little jingle. We named the company Rent-A-Stiff, just, it, you know, as a joke, uh, it was my wife and my, her sister, my sister-in-law. Um, and... It, it you know it passed but it stuck with me and you know i lived with it for a long time but never did anything with it and so uh was looking for something to write that was sort of halloween themed and remembered the jingle actually set it to music and it became the the premise for this play which is about a a proprietor of a taxidermy human taxidermy company (laughs) and you know again not to give too much away but uh not necessarily a business isn't necessarily going the best and and so he's trying to come up with ways to to generate more business so i love the backstory there and i think you know as playwrights we carry around all these little snippets of ideas and i think the best ones usually are something you know i always wanted to do something with this and the time was right and then it just is fully developed and realized so i love it Um, I will say this show has a lot of funny dialogue, but I can tell you the puns. The puns got me (laughs) right away. (laughs) So part of my job involves reading tons of scripts every week. So not only for us, for Stories Found, but for other theaters. So, you know, I have a process. I I know pretty quickly how I feel about a script. But, you know, as a writer, I still read the whole thing. I want everyone to know their scripts are read. But um, but I get an idea early on how I feel. And I think I was like one sentence into rent a stiff. <laughs> and I went, you know what? We're going to produce this. Uh, the line was, of corpse we can. And I was like, that's it. <laughs> I'm hooked. So how important are puns in your other work? And I expect them in other shows as well. <laughs> oh, I, I am punny to a fault. No, I love, I, you know, I have written things that are, are a little more serious, but mm-hmm. but I, you know, comedy is, is more my fort and, and what I really enjoy writing. And, and I will admit that when I can come up with a good pun, it will find its way into a script. So, yes. <laughs> Well, I'm, you know, I'm going to assume that this is pretty heavily influenced by, you know, the Frankenstein monster. And, you know, we have the similarly named rival business owner, but 
we literally have animated corpses, which is another pun. It's a visual pun. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, I love it. So, yeah, I mean, uh, I think that uh, being able to carry an idea and then and to develop it and it's just full of puns and yet it, the dialogue doesn't suffer for it. It's still really smart, really snappy. It was well, it's you. just it's well written. Um, I was looking at your other work on NPX and you've got quite a few great scripts. So well, thank you. Can you tell us a little bit about your writing process? Like, are you one of those writers who writes daily no matter what, or are you more of like me? It's just an only when I have an idea kind of writer. <laughs> Oh, I, I wish that I was disciplined enough to write all the time. Uh, it you know it comes and fits and starts, and mm-hmm. there will be a period of time where I might write a lot, and then there will be months where I do absolutely nothing. Yes, so, that's good to hear. I love that. Yeah. So <laughs> no, yeah, I, I really like when an idea takes me, then I will follow it as far as I can. But I I can't tell you the number of incomplete scripts and ideas that I still have laying around that are just waiting patiently for me to do something. But waiting them. exactly, and and but that counts as writing, you know. Sure. Sure. They're there. Yeah. And, and, you know, it's always fascinating to me how differently playwrights will answer that question. I, for, for me, it depends on what I'm writing, right? For plays, I feel like I need to hear a few lines of dialogue in my head, and then I'm ready to sit down and sort of write the rest of it. Where if it's an essay, I might have to write my way into the idea. So do you sort of hear dialogue first, or, or do you find it as you write? Um, I, yeah. I, would, I guess I would say that most of the time I, I kind of find it as I go. I, mm-hmm. I usually start with an idea or a premise or a character, like, you know, some, some aspect of it might be where it, it begins. And then I'll just start thinking about how a story might evolve from, from whatever that idea was. And, and then the dialogue usually comes as I start to write uh, and rewrite and re rewrite. So, <laughs> well, your process works. Cause yeah, the dialogue here is really <laughs> well, smart. You. It's very natural to you. Even if, and I love when you have one of these sort of, farcical comedies where the dialogue is still really engaging. And I think you've done a great job there. I really Uh, appreciate that. Thank you. You're welcome. Another fun aspect of this show is the jingle. It is, (laughs) (laughs) it is well composed. It gets stuck in your head, just like a real jingle. And it really sets the tone of the whole play right away. So we listen to it. We know we're about to get something creepy and funny. And it's (laughs) just, it's such a nice touch to add a little musical element to an audio drama. What, what is your musical background? Uh, well, actually, theatrically, most of what I do are musicals. I'm actually a oh. performer and a director as well as a playwright. And oh. so m- most, I guess my career in theater started as an actor and mostly in musicals. So I, I've done that for almost 30 years now. Um, and so just, I guess my my interest in music kind of grew out of just my involvement in musical theater. Mm -hmm. So there are actually some musicals that I've written and some 10 minute musicals that I've written. Um, So, yeah, so that the jingle, I, I I honestly cannot remember who (laughs) among my wife, my sister-in-law and I may have written which parts of it or Mm. or where that the melody came from. But, um, but I remembered it well enough that I actually set it to, to music and, and, and built out the harmony. So I was, and it kind of, you know, it kind of had a uh, sort of uh, Andrew sisters sort of <laughs> feel to it. So I tried so to, to get some little tight jazz harmonies in there. Well, I love it. And and sending over the track, I was like, oh, yeah, well, we're going to use what you have because this is perfect. It really is. Great. And I was walking around all day singing it. I'm like, great. It's stuck in my head. <laughs> so, <laughs> great idea to get your play <laughs> produced is to include a really catchy jingle. <laughs> I have to remember that I'll, I'll include jingles in all of my future in all shows plays. now. Right. <laughs> So I loved I love 10 minute shows. I love 10 minute musicals. So I'm really gonna have to look at some of your other work because to be able to have a musical in 10 minutes is just so much fun. So I love hearing that people are writing those. Yeah, I think there may be one on in PX. I'm not 100% sure. I actually have a 10 minute musical that's going to be included in a local 10 minute play festival in January. Um, right. Which festival I, is that? Uh, it's called Homebrew Theater. Um, it's done by the Drama Workshop, which is in Cincinnati, Ohio. Um, and they do it each year. And it's it's a combination of 10-minute plays and local beer. So you know, oh, that's, that's a perfect, perfect combination. Yeah. Okay, that's fantastic. It's a brilliant idea for a festival. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so, okay, so I have one final question for you. It's probably sure. the most important. Say you've All got right. a Halloween party coming up. Which rent-a-stiff model do you rent? Oh... <laughs> 
Well, I, I'm gonna I, again. I don't want to give anything away, but I, I might I might have to go with with uh, Mr. Utt's latest model. I, that's an excellent, excellent answer. <laughs> <laughs> it's the latest thing. Exactly. Fred, thanks so much for joining us today on Stories Found. It has been an absolute pleasure to talk to you. Thank you. It's been a pleasure for me as well. And thank you again for including my show in your podcast. I look sure forward thing. to it. Stories Found is now proud to present Rent a Stiff by Fred Tacon. Need some body to hide under your covers so your mommy doesn't know you sneaked out for the night? Want a plus one in your passenger seat so you can drive in the carpool lane? Halloween is lurking just around the corner. Be the talk of the neighborhood with a real live dead guy on your front porch holding your candy bowl. I can hear the kitties screaming with delight. Call 555-2639, that's 555-BUDDY. Or come on down to Rent-A-Stiff, human taxidermy specialists. We're six feet under the interstate, on the corner of Styx and Main by the river. When you gotta have a body or cadaver. Can we help you? Of course we can. Call us, we're Rent-A-Stiff. Ring! 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 I have been running that radio commercial for a month and it's silent as a crypt. Ivan! Ivan! Yes, Mr. Ut. Ivan, how many orders have come in through the Intiment? You mean the internet, Mr. Ut? Uh, yes, yes. None, Mr. Ut. None? What is wrong with people these days? rent a stiff used to be the hottest cadaver boutique in the tri-state area, especially at Halloween. And now my business has dried up like a withered corpse. If I don't get some rental soon, it will be the final nail in my coffin. Everyone is going to the new place that just opened. What new place? Lease the deceased. What? Yeah, they're all the rage, lying around the block. I saw Mrs. Lugosi there picking up a few bodies for her haunted house. What? She's one of our best customers. Why would she do that? I've been trying to tell you our stock is old and outdated. We haven't had anything new in years. Do you know how many of those stiffs are held together with duct tape and chicken wire? And the clothes they're wearing are actually from the 50s. They are classics, and they are all customer favorites. Smiling Sid, Waving William, Sleeping Sally. They were favorites. <laughs> Lease the Deceased is over on 13th Street. By the morgue and the outlet mall. They've got fresh corpses in the latest fashions. And they've even added animatronics. They move. What? That was my idea. I was going to unveil Moving Morty next week. I hear they even do custom orders with departed loved ones. Their tagline is, We'll rig your mortis. <laughs> Enough! How do you even know about this place and I don't? And why were you there talking to Mrs. Lugosi and not bringing her here? Whoa, settle down. I was just checking out the competition. So we know what we're up against. And how do you not know about them? They're all over the place. What do you mean? TV, internet, social media. I don't do any of those things. I know. That's the problem. You aren't keeping up with the times. I had to beg you to let me set up a website. And it's not doing a thing for me. That's because you put all of your old crap online. It looks like... It looks old and like crap. You need something new. What about that secret project you've been working on? 
What do you mean? Uh, I, I don't know. You spend all your time in the attic, and when I ask about it, you just say you're working on something. Is it maybe a new body we can advertise? What is it? It's none of your business. I hope it's some of your business, or you'll be out of business. Uh, all right. It, it is something. Something secret, something big. It will put Rent-A-Stiff back on top and lease the deceased will cease to exist. Eh, exist. But I must know that I can trust you. Do you swear not to tell another soul, living or dead, what I am about to tell you? Yes, I swear. What is it? I have discovered... Yeah? I have discovered a way to... A way to... I have discovered a way to bring... Uh, oh, a way to bring what? Shh! A customer! Greetings, madam. Welcome to rent -a stiff your premier human taxidermy specialist. I am Mr. Utt, the grim renter, at your service. Can I interest you in some fineries? My that... card. Oh, yes. Uh, Francis Kinstein. Kinstein. It's pronounced Kinstein, and please call me Fran. Yes, of course, Frank Kinstein, proprietor of Least of the Deceased. How dare you come in here? Yeah, what do you think you're doing? And how dare you open a store in my town and try to steal my customers? I have been a monolith of this community for decades. They may have had their heads turned with your fancy outfits and new corpse smell, but when they realize that you're just a cheap knockoff who doesn't care about them or their mortuarial needs, they will come back to me. Oh, riveting speech. I'm not a patient woman, so let me be frank. I want to buy you out. What? <laughs> Nonsense. That was not the plan. Uh, uh, our plan. That was not our plan. Uh, we have a plan. We were just discussing. You can't compete with me, and it would be too tedious to wait for your tired little business to wheeze out its last ragged breath. So let me put you out of my misery. $200,000 cash now for everything. The building, the inventory, all past, present, and future product research. Oh, I have never been so insulted in all my life. Get out! Uh, if you insist. But when I go, the offer leaves with me. Wait! It is a generous offer. Yes, it is. And I am getting old and tired. Yeah, you say that a lot. And business has been decomposing for a while. Maybe... Uh... And I don't know if I can finish the you-know-what on my own. The secret project? Right. Whatever you figured out how to do, I'm sure Fran can perfect it. Like she did with the animatronics. Miss Kinstein, this is a lot to process. May I have some time to consider your offer? I won't keep you waiting long, I promise. Very well, you have until tomorrow. But be warned, if you refuse me, I will cremate you. Good day, Mr. Utt, Ivan. You. Now, hold on, Mr. Utt. You betrayed me. I would never. What are you? She said your name. I'm sure you said it. She knows you, and you two had a plan. Wait, I, I can explain. 
And you gave her my animatronics. And you were trying to find out my secret in the attic so you could give it to her, too. It's your fault, okay? I've tried to help you, but you won't listen and you won't innovate. Morty was 40 years dead and falling apart, even with the rigging. He was never going to save your business. But she was offering me a chance to revolutionize our industry with cadaver robotics, so I did what I had to do. Yes, you did. And it's okay. I'm not mad. You're not? No, no. You've helped me, actually. I have? With what? With the project in the attic. You see, I've made a discovery. You could call it an innovation, but I've been having a problem getting it to actually work. What is it? I have discovered a way to bring the dead back to life. What? It's true. I can bring a corpse back to life and fully under my control. That's amazing. But what's the problem? You're right. All of our bodies are too old. The process of reanimation takes a massive amount of energy. The first stiff exploded, and the second burnt to a crisp. And even when I succeeded, they only lasted hours, sometimes only minutes, before they were gone again. So you can really do it. You can bring the dead back to life. You just need... That fresh corpse smell. Hold on, Mr. Ut. What are you saying? Why are you looking at me like that? You've solved my problem. Oh, you can't be serious. <laughs> You're going to revolutionize our industry. M Mr. Ut, no. <laughs> when you gotta have a body or cadaver, call us, we're rent a stiff. That's right, folks. There's already a waiting list longer than a funeral procession. Reserve your turn today with Ivan Alive, our first fully reanimated cadaver companion. He cooks, he cleans, he cuddles. You'll be the talk of the cocktail party when you stroll in with Ivan on your arm. Comes with remote control, instruction manual, and an emergency sewing kit. Call 555-2639, that's 555-BODY. Or come on down to Rent-A-Stiff, human taxidermy specialists. We're six feet under the interstate on the corner of Sticks and Main by the river. When you gotta have a body or cadaver. Can we help you? Of course we can. Call us, we're Rent-A-Stiff. You've just heard Rent-A-Stiff by Fred Tacon. It was performed for you by Joe Lorenz as Mr. Utt, Liz Bernstein as Ivan, and Kate Eau Claire as Fran Kinstein. This episode was edited and mixed for you by Paul Hanna and ELA Studios. If you'd like to read more of Fred's work, you can find him on NPX, the new play exchange. We'll have a post on our website with more information about Fred, as well as bios and links to our talented actors. You can find all of that on our website, storiesfound.com. Our sponsor this week is us. We've hijacked this spot because we're excited to tell you about our new newsletter. Subscribe to be the first to know about new episodes, calls for submissions, auditions, shows, and more. Join us at storiesfound.substack.com. We'll have the sign-up link right on the homepage of our website, storiesfound.com. Thanks for listening to Stories Found. We've been your hosts, Ava Love Hannah and Paul Hanna. Get more info about this week's episode, subscribe to our newsletter, or submit your own story and be a featured storyteller in a future episode. 
You can do all that and more on our website, storiesfound.com. Stories Found was recorded at ELA Studios deep in the heart of Austin, Texas. Thank you.